group of U.S. congressmen call on Pentagon to allow Ukraine to attack targets in Russia. The U.S. House of Representatives Intelligence Committee issued an appeal from both parties to Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin to authorize Ukraine to attack targets in Russia and to expand Ukrainian F-16 fighter training. According to House Intelligence Committee Chairman Michael Turner, Ukraine should be permitted to strike critical targets in Russia under specific conditions. Lawmakers feel Ukrainians are unable to properly defend themselves due to the Biden administration's strategy, so it must be changed. Ukrainian officials have expressed grave concerns, stating that the situation is worse than ever. The United States should authorize Ukraine to use weapons capable of striking targets within Russia under certain circumstances, train additional Ukrainian F-16 pilots, and bolster Ukraine's air defense systems, Turner said. The letter signed by 13 congressmen on the 21st of May reads, Our Ukrainian allies are requesting permission to use certain weapons provided by the United States to conduct operations on strategic targets inside Russian and Russian-controlled territory, it is essential the Biden administration allows Ukraine's military leaders an ability to conduct a full spectrum of operations necessary to respond to Russia's unprovoked attack on their sovereign land. There remains a critical need for a substantial number of trained pilots to operate these aircraft as the F-16 fighter jets become available to Ukraine. Graduating 12 Ukrainian pilots is simply insufficient. Ukraine is at war and slots for Ukraine must be prioritized over other foreign countries. Lawmakers also point out that Kyiv is asking for at least seven additional Patriot systems to protect large urban areas. We ask that you work with us to expedite resources as our friends in Ukraine continue to defend their territory against Russia's brutal assault and aggression. Several Democratic representatives signed the letter, including Jim Himes, Brendan Boyle, Andre Carson, and Jason Crow. Heavy rains hit the Brasilia at the end of April and continued into May, resulting in more than 160 confirmed fatalities and the worst flooding the country has seen for 80 years. Automotive suppliers remain inoperative and distribution networks continue to be disrupted. The key agricultural state of Rio Grande do Sul has been hit by an unprecedented climate disaster for the past three weeks, with cities and rural areas alike inundated by torrential rains that have left more than 161 people dead and some 100 missing. More than 15 centimeters of rain could fall over the weekend and will probably worsen flooding, according to Bulletin from Brazil's National Meteorology Institute. It said there is also a high likelihood that winds will intensify and water levels rise in the Pedos Lagoon next to the state capital, Porto Alegre, and the surrounding area. Another 581,633 people are homeless, although not in shelters. In total, Rio Grande do Sul has 654,194 people out of their homes. It is the region's fourth extreme weather event in less than a year, a phenomenon scientists say is driven by climate change and also deforestation. There's a global component to climate change, and also a regional one, which is the loss of native vegetation. That increased the intensity of the floods, says biologist Eduardo Valles of Map Biomas, an organization that uses satellite images to track deforestation. More rain started coming down in Brazil's already flooded Rio Grande do Sul state, where many of those remaining are poor people with limited ability to move to less dangerous areas. According to the group, Rio Grande do Sul lost 22% of its native vegetation, or 3.6 million hectares, from 1985 to 2022. Native forests help ensure water permeates the soil, preventing it from accumulating on the surface, says Jacqueline Sordi, a biologist and journalist based in the region who specializes in climate issues. Empresário daqui, ó, que infantil teve que sair, né? Coitadinho. Aqui, São João, Vamos, Bel. 